Hey everyone and welcome back. We're diving into all things AI this week. And let me tell you, there's a lot to unpack. Yeah, no kidding. Camille Banks' Adapt and Create newsletter is bursting with wild AI developments as always. Seriously. Like, did you catch that Lionsgate news? Lionsgate. Yeah. Oh, you mean the studio behind, like, Hunger Games and John Wick, what they do. They're teaming up with this AI video company, Runway. Get this. They're building a custom AI model trained on all those iconic Lionsgate films. Whoa, hold on. Trained on their films? Like, the actual movies? Yep. Imagine all that cinematic history, all those crazy action sequences and those dystopian worlds all feeding into this AI. That's kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. It's really pushing the boundaries of what AI can do in a creative industry like filmmaking. Right. It makes you wonder, like, will AI be brainstorming the next blockbuster or taking over special effects? It's definitely a possibility and an interesting one for sure. What stands out to me, though, is how this partnership is presenting AI as a tool to enhance creativity. You know, it's not about replacing filmmakers entirely, at least not yet. Right. Uh, More like giving filmmakers uh, a whole new set of tools to work with. I like that. But it does make you wonder, will we even be able to tell when AI has had a hand in a film? Will it be super obvious or more subtle, you think? Ooh, that's the big question, isn't it? And one I bet filmmakers are wrestling with right now, how much AI influence is too much? Will audiences be into it or will they miss that human touch? It'll be interesting to see how it all unfolds. Totally. Okay, ready to shift gears a bit. From the silver screen to the small screen, shall we say. YouTube is diving head first into AI too. Oh yeah, what are they up to? So they're rolling out all these AI tools for creators. Mm. Text video generators, help with brainstorming ideas, even AI dubbing in different languages. Wow, and I bet it's not just a small group of like early adopters using this stuff either. You're telling me. The newsletter actually cited that 92%, yeah, 92% of YouTube creators are already using AI tools in some way. Seriously? It's huge. It's crazy, right? AI has become the norm so fast. I mean, almost everyone making videos these days is already using it in their process. Yeah. But you know what I find really interesting about all this? What's that? The potential to really level the playing field for content creation. Think about it. Yeah. Smaller businesses, educators, really anyone with a story to tell could use these tools to create high quality videos. Right. Without needing a huge budget or fancy equipment. Exactly. That accessibility is amazing when you really stop and think about it. Imagine we could see this explosion of content from voices and perspectives that haven't always had the means to, you know, produce those really polished videos. Definitely. It's exciting for sure, but it also kind of makes you wonder, like, with so much more content out there, how do we even sort through it all? How will anyone find the stuff that really matters to them? It's almost like we'll need AI just to help us navigate the AI-generated content. Right. But speaking of making life easier, AI isn't just shaking up how we watch and make videos, right? Mm. It's also changing how we work. Yeah. Especially for smaller businesses. Oh, absolutely. And the newsletter highlights some really cool AI tools that seem like tailor-made for any entrepreneur who feels like they're constantly drowning in to-dos. Yeah, like what? One that really jumped out at me was Bulna. Bulma. It's essentially like a 24-7 AI receptionist, you know? Oh, wow. So no more missed calls, no more customers getting lost in voicemail purgatory. Okay, that's genius. Yeah. As someone who, you know, runs their own business, the idea of having an AI handle those initial calls, maybe even schedule appointments. All right. That sounds amazing. It frees up so much time and mental energy to actually, you know, focus on the stuff that really matters, the bigger picture. Totally. And then there's Zivi, which is like a personal assistant, but for your inbox. Oh. Sifts through all your emails, your Slack messages, everything, and then prioritizes what actually needs your attention. Oh, man. I think we could all relate to that feeling, right? Opening your inbox, and it's just like this mountain of unread messages. The worst. Yeah, ZV sounds like it could be a lifesaver for anyone who feels constantly behind on email. For sure. Yeah. But as cool as these tools are, I, I mean, they almost sound like magic, right? Yeah. Uh, it's important to remember they're not without their potential downsides. What do you mean? Well, we're welcoming AI into our businesses, right, and relying on it for more and more tasks. But we have to be cautious, mindful of things like data security and privacy. That's a good point. These tools are often accessing some pretty sensitive information about customers, finances, mm -hmm. our day-to-day -day operations, it's definitely something to think about before you just hand over the reins to an AI. Exactly. And it's not even just about protecting your data. It's about making sure you're not like 
becoming overly reliant on these tools. Mm -hmm. As helpful as AI can be, we can't forget about human intuition, you know, human decision making, especially when it comes to stuff like customer service or strategic planning for the future. Right. Finding that balance is key. It's about leveraging the power of AI without letting it completely take over, like finding that sweet spot. Yeah. But on that note of AI pushing boundaries, the newsletter also highlighted some really exciting advancements in like AI research itself. Oh yeah. And some of this stuff is just mind blowing, honestly. Like what? Well, there was that piece about Alibaba's Quinn 2.5. Quinn 2.5. It's a multilingual AI model, <laughs> super powerful. But what's really interesting is how compact it is. Like compared to other models with similar abilities, it's tiny. Oh, interesting. So it's not just about creating AI that's bigger and more complex anymore. It's about making it leaner, more efficient. Exactly. And that shift to smaller, more efficient models, it's huge. Faster processing speeds. You can run these powerful models on less expensive hardware. Right. It opens up a ton of possibilities, especially when you think about making this technology accessible to even more people. It's like putting the power of AI in everyone's pocket, right? Right. And speaking of, like, Unexpected applications. Did you see that thing about Google's whale whisper? Oh, yeah, that was cool. An AI model specifically trained to identify whale calls. Amazing. Oh. It really shows how specialized AI can get, like solving really, really specific problems. Absolutely. In this case, it's helping researchers track whale populations, you right. know, monitor their migration, even understand their communication. So cool. And all that feeds into conservation efforts, right? Exactly. It's kind of wild when you think about it. AI can go from writing computer code to deciphering whale songs. Yeah. It's incredible. The range is pretty mind-blowing. Speaking of range, the newsletter also mentioned Microsoft's Grin MOE, which is apparently amazing at coding and math. Right. And another example of those smaller, more efficient models we were talking about. Right. Even though it's compact, Grin and OE is making waves because it can generate really complex code, you know, and solve these super complicated equations, tasks that would normally require much larger, more demanding AI models. It seems like every week there's some new AI breakthrough. I know, right? It's exciting, but it's also <laughs> kind of a lot, you know? Definitely a lot to process. Like, how are we supposed to keep up with it all? What does it all even mean for us? I think the main takeaway here is that AI isn't some abstract thing anymore. It's not off in the future. It's here right now, and it's actively shaping our world. Okay, yeah. It's not even about whether AI will have an impact, you know. It's about understanding how it's going to impact our lives, our work, everything. So less about worrying if robots are going to take over, and more about figuring out how we can use these new tools to our advantage. Exactly. The people who will thrive in this new world, the businesses that will thrive, are the ones who embrace this technology. You got to experiment with it, you know? Find creative ways to use it. I'm just standing on the sidelines. Yeah, right. Jump in, get in the game. The possibilities really are endless if you're willing to explore. I love that. It's a call to action for all of us. Mm -hmm. Well, that about wraps up this deep dive into the world of AI. It's been fun. As always, a fascinating conversation. Big thanks to you for joining me. Anytime. And to everyone listening, keep those questions coming, keep exploring, and we'll catch you next time.